Namaskar everyone, I am Ram Biradar from Ajurad Classes. So now we will be learning about religions of India. Right? So we have majorly Hinduism, next uh, that is uh, Muslim or Islam, and then Sikhism, Christianity, and Jainism, or and what? Buddhism. These are the major religions in India, isn't it? So everyone will be knowing that. So we'll study in detail. What we'll do? We'll study in detail about them. Okay. So here, if you see, so major religions in India are Hinduism, Sikhism, Christianity, Buddhism, Jainism, and Zoroastrianism. So this is represents Hinduism. Okay. So and this represents Sikhism. Okay. And uh, the cross represents Christianity, okay, Christianity, and this symbol represents Islam or Muslim, okay, and this is Buddhism, okay, understood? So, we will study in detail about that. India is a secular country, keep it in mind, there is no religion, okay, India is secular country means people of different religions have the freedom to practice and follow the religion of their choice. In India, there is no such as one religion is above the other. All religions are the same for the constitution of India. Constitution of India is the what? Final document. Okay. So, India is secular means all the religions are equal. Okay. So, people have their choice. They can choose any religion they want to follow. Okay. So, there should be nothing as no inferior, no superior, what? Religion. All religions are the same. Religions are way of living. What are religions? Religions are way of living means to lead a life. They just guide us. Right? So, religions are guiding principles for the life. Okay? India is a secular country. All religions are same. Understand? Okay. So, let's see the first that is the major religion in India is Hinduism. Okay. So, in India major population is follows Hinduism. Okay. Means Hindu way of life. So, this is Om. We know we say it as Om. This represents that is the symbol of Hinduism. There are so many different symbols in Hinduism but one of the major. Okay. It is Om. Yes, what? Swastik also, no, sir. Swastik, yes. There are different symbols. I told, right? So, swastik is this, right? Swastik is one of the symbol. There are many symbols in Hinduism. Okay? Hinduism has so many gods and deities. Okay? So, that is why Hinduism is very, very widely spread in India. Okay? So, Hinduism is largest community in India. Means most of the people, many people follow Hinduism. That is 80% of the population. Okay. Hinduism is the oldest religion. It is considered as oldest religion in the world. Okay. That is the way of life. The Hindu way of life is considered as the oldest way of life in the world. Okay. So, and the third largest in the world after Christianity and Islam. So, Christianity is followed by many people in the world. So, that stands first. After that is Islam and the third is Hinduism. Okay. Third largest religion. Understand? That is the third largest religion after Christianity and Islam. Okay. So, here if you see the term Hindu is derived from Sanskrit name Sindhu. That is Indus. You may have seen. That is there is no such thing as mentioned as religion or Hinduism in the old text. That is Vedas or Upanishads or anywhere. This is name given by that is outsiders. That is okay. So because Hinduism that is the way of life was practiced near the this river Indus river which originates in the Himalayas Indus river that is the name of this river was Sindhu and 
that sindhu in the english they used to say it as indus so from that name they derived this hindu term okay there is no mention of hindu in any of the text in older days so this is given by the outsiders okay so because this was followed in this region pakistan was also part of india before independence so in this near this river it was followed that is why it is given the name hindu that is sindhu river in the sanskrit the name is sindhu river this river is sindhu okay got it presently major part of the sindhu river flows in pakistan now okay good so next is hinduism was originally known as sanatan dharma or everlasting religion sanatan means everlasting always living everlasting means always right so always living sanatan dharma dharma means it is your duty it should not be considered as the sanskrit word dharma means it is duty okay good so sacred religions uh, texts known as scriptures means that is books and all are for hinduism are vedas upanishads and epics like mahabharata and ramayana and puranas okay so we will study about them all hindu scriptures are considered as revelations of god and written in sanskrit so sanskrit is the major what language used to write all these texts that is books okay so revelation of god means it is told by the god means the god himself has what told this and it is written by the god considered to be the written by the god okay fine so vedas mainly vedas are four rigveda samaveda yajurveda and atharveda rigveda is the oldest rigveda is the oldest so what it contains let us see so four vedas are the sacred text of hinduism that is books okay text means books so they teach the eternal truths revealed by the god means you may be knowing why do we born what is the meaning of life you may be knowing like that those all are discussed in vedas means what is life what is our uh, way of how should we live everything are written in this vedas okay so that is teach the eternal truths revealed by the god so four vedas are rigveda i just now told yajurveda and samaveda and atharva veda so first one is rigveda second one is yajurveda third one is samaveda and then fourth one is atharva veda in the rigveda what is there veda of verses so that is different different mantras and all okay so verses and yajurveda vedas of sacrificial saying okay so you, you may have done what yagna and all there we do sacrifices right so uh, that kind of what mantras and all so samaveda is veda of songs veda of songs and atharveda is veda of that is atharvan a mystical fire priest okay so these are about vedas so there are four vedas you should know oldest is rigveda first or oldest is rig veda okay got it so here among the four vedas rigveda is the oldest text oldest that is the first therefore it is known as the first testament of the mankind okay this is the first testament of the mankind that is the oldest book understand so rigveda contains 10 mandals out of which 10th mandal contain the famous purushak purushak sukta okay which explains the four varnas brahma brahman kshatriya vaishya and shudra okay so 10 mandals means like 10 chapters okay so in the 10th chapter it is like the four varnas means the four parts that is the caste 
right so brahman kshatriya vaishya and shudra okay so this is about the vedas any doubt for anyone no sir no doubts okay sir good. i have a doubt sir yes sir who wrote all these vedas sir uh, vedas it is that is what i told it is said to be what told by the god okay it is said to be told by the god okay fine after that other rushi munis right uh, rushis and munis has written that in the form of text okay, okay ha sir what so, is meaning of purushakta 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 means uh, means different part that is categorization that is brahman kshatriya vaishya and shudra categorization four varnas are there right so that purushakta means different people puru means purush means person okay like that sir how do you know that it's been told by god ah uh, it is believed beta it is believed okay that is also what it this books okay wait 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 i will come one by one it is believed okay and after that the text contains what the book contains very fine uh, philosophical knowledge okay so in that context it is believed to be told by the god understand so yes any other doubt sir is is it made to learn for and uh, like that so here next is that is upanishads so upanishads are what upanishads are concluding portions of the vedas or the end of vedas the teaching based on them is called vedanta upanishads are the sources of hindu philosophy so vedas are very difficult to understand okay vedas all these four vedas are very difficult to understand and this summary we can say the summary or the practices and summary is upanishads vedas summary is upanishads okay it is made easier to understand so that is concluding portions we can say concluding portions or summary so that is summary of vedas is upanishads okay so the books are vedanta they are called vedanta so there are 13 mukhya or principal up- vedantas that is uh, upanishads are there so these are the 13 upanishads so just remember there are 13 upanishads are there okay so upanishads are concluding portions or summary of vedas okay yes so this is what about the upanishads okay sir, next is sir. epics epics means mahakavya means books main books so main sir, like mahabharata ha mahabharata and ramayana okay so two main mahakavyas are ramayana and mahabharata okay so in the mahabharata we may be knowing there is the gita right so gita is told by the god krishna so ramayana is known as adi kavya adi kavya or oldest epic adi means oldest so oldest epic of the world written by the poet valmiki so who has written ramayana valmiki okay uh, so valmiki that is rushi muni valmiki has written this book so i will come to your doubts once i finish this mahakavyas okay wait so mahabharata is the old longest that is mahabharata is very very big book okay that is longest epic of the world written by ved vyasa who has written this mahabharata ved vyasa it contains 18 parvans that is chapters okay so mahabharata is the longest epic okay so it contains like 18 parvans that is chapters so here bhagavad gita i told bhagavad gita is part of mahabharata so is extracted from bhishma parvan that is the chapter name bhishma parvan of mahabharata shanti parvan is the longest parvan of the mahabharata so bhagavad gita is in chapter which bhishma parvan and shanti parvan the chapter shanti parvan is the largest parvan means largest chapter in the mahabharata so we know 
Bhagavad Gita is also one of the sacred book or holy book of Hinduism. Okay, so this is about the epics that is Mahakavyas. Okay, main Mahabharata and Ramayana. Okay, yes. So any doubt for anyone here? No, sir. Yes, okay. Yes, sir. Okay, good. So the next is that is Puranas. So Puranas are Purana means that is old. Okay, Puranas means old. So there are four, 18 famous Puranas. The Puranas were written to popularize the religion of the Vedas. So means these are what kind of summary of Vedas. Puranas were written to popularize the Vedas. So Matsya Purana is the oldest Puranic text. So there are 18 Puranas. How many Puranas? 18 Puranas. Okay, so you can see here. Brahma Vaira Brahma Vaivarata Purana and Vamana Purana Markandeya Purana Shiva Mahapurana and Bhavishya Purana Kurma Purana Varaha Purana Garuda Purana Agni Purana Vishnu Purana and then Brahi Manda Purana Srimad Bhagavata Purana Linga Purana, Narada Purana, Brahma Purana, Padma Purana, Matsya Purana and Skanda Purana. These are 18 Puranas, right? So, Matsya Purana is the oldest, okay? Oldest Purana, okay? Good. So, these are the Puranas. So, these are written on the basis of Vedas to popularize them, to make them understand by the people, okay? So, we will see some of the important temples in India okay so the first if you see that is Somnath temple Hindu temples popularly known as Mandir we say Mandir right for the temple it is a structure designed to bring human beings and gods together through worship sacrifice and devotion we go to temple to pray right so that is how so here Somnath temple. Somnath temple is in Gujarat and is the oldest Jyotirling among the 12 Jyotirling shrines of the Lord Shiva. So you may be knowing in Hinduism 12 Jyotirlings are there and oldest Jyotirling is Somnath temple that is in Gujarat. Okay good. So next is Virupaksha temple. Virupaksha temple is in Karnataka that is Hampi so Virupaksha temple this is the if you see the photo this is the what Somnath temple that is in Gujarat okay next is in Karnataka okay so this is Virupaksha temple so it is located in Hampi so the Virupaksha temple is dedicated to Lord Shiva the traditional uh, this traditional temple is considered one of the world's heritage site of unesco so in the virupaksha temple if you see the shadow will be inverted so there is one small opening is there through that the light will come and it will be inverted shadow okay so that is the gopura the gopura can be seen inverted in the shadow that is in the hampi okay this is the second that is the one of the jyotirlinga right so this is this temple is given important status that is united unesco's world heritage sites okay so next is khajurao temple khajurao temple is located in madhya pradesh so khajurao group of temples counted as one of the unesco's world heritage sites in madhya pradesh these are located in Vandhya Pradesh, were built by rulers of Chandela dynasty. So the rulers or kings who built it is Chandela dynasty rulers. Okay, these are the Khajurao temple. There are so many temples in Khajurao. Okay, there are group of temples. Next is Jagannath temple. Jagannath temple is in Odisha. So Jagannath temple is called what? Yama Nika Tirtha. Yama Nika Tirtha. This temple is in Puri, that is Odisha, 
पुरी इज फेमस फॉर इट्स एन्युअल चारियट फेस्टिवल और रथ यात्रा रिसेंटली देर इज देर वॉज रथ यात्रा सो दिस टेम्पल दे वॉट टेक द डायटी इन अ प्रोसेशन इन रथाज ओके दे बिल्ड द रथाज near the temple beautiful beautiful rathas there will be very big procession so it is called it is also the part of one of the char dhams char dham yatra you may heard of so it is part of the char dham yatra okay next is ramnath temple uh, that is uh, rameshwaram temple rameshwaram temple is in tamil nadu so ramesh uh, ramnath swami literally meaning the master of rama is believed to have been established by the lord rama okay so the temple houses one of the 12 jyotirlingas it is part of the four pilgrimage site that is char dham yatra the temple has the longest corridor among all the hindu temples in india and the longest corridor in the world so if you see here this is the rameshwaram temple so if you see there are 1200 pillars how many pillars are there 1200 pillars are there so this corridor when you enter the temple this corridor is longest in the world in the temples okay next is dwarkadhish temple that is in gujarat dwarkadhish temple means it is in mathura so dwarkadhish temple is also known as jagat mandir is one of the four Hindu pilgrimage site that is Char Dham Yatra. The original structure of the temple was destroyed by the Muhammad Begda in 1472. So and rebuilt in 15th and or 16th century. So it was rebuilt in 15th and 16th century. So that is this is in Mathura. Okay. Next is Badrinath Temple. You may have heard of Kedarnath and Badrinath, right? This is in Uttarakhand. so it is in himalayas okay so badrinath temple is one of the four char dham that is four or char dham pilgrimage sites in india it is uh, the following temple is mentioned in various sacred text of hindu such as bhagavad purana that is in mahabharata okay sacred text uh, mentioned that lord vishnu meditated under the badri tree and hence the place got its name okay so that is badrinath Badrinath is a Vishnu temple. Understand? So these are the temples of main temples of Hindu. Okay? Yes. So any doubt for anyone? Let me know here. Yes. good so let's go to the next religion that is islam that is muslim okay so here this is the symbol of the islam and islam is the second most followed religion in the world and the largest minority community in india second largest so first is christianity in the world okay we are talking about in the world and next is islam and the third is we just now saw hinduism okay fine so this is the second largest means most of the people right like that population wise and in india if you see this is the second after hinduism the second largest community is islam that is we say it as minority okay so majority is major many of the people are hinduism 80% like that minority so largest minority is islam okay so let us see here next the prophet muhammad who was born at mecca in saudi arabia this is the mecca prophet muhammad is considered as the what founder of islam so Mecca is in Saudi Arabia. He is founder of the Islam. So he founded the Islam in seventh century. Prophet Muhammad. He was considered as the last prophet sent by Allah. The God of Islam is Allah. The first prophet was Adam. The first prophet of Islam that is Allah sent by Allah is Adam. Okay, prophet means. 
guru okay so the prophet muhammad in the 7th century founded the islam next is the holy book of islam is quran this is the book that is quran okay quran is the holy book of the islam and the temple we say temple in hindu right the same this is the masjid or mosque mosque or masjid so worship worship the place of worship that is the praying temple is mosque we say that is muslim also referred to as mosque by its arabic name or that is masjid in arabic okay mosque means it is in english masjid is in arabic next is the holiest site of religion is mecca mecca is the place where prophet muhammad was born we just now saw this is the mecca this at this place prophet muhammad was born and madina mecca and madina you may have heard of madina is where he was buried means he was he died and buried his body so this is madina this place is madina okay so you may have heard the muslim people go on a pilgrimage right that is hajj yatra it is so it said as hajj yatra they visit mecca and madina okay so in their religion islam in the islam it is written that everyone everyone should visit mecca at least once in their lifetime at least once in their lifetime so they go on a hajj yatra our government of india also promotes that and what they give the help in all the kind to make it possible the hajj yatra okay good so next is indonesia is the country with the largest muslim population means largest muslim population means by number the number of people okay so it is what in indonesia so countries with more than 90% of the population as muslim are egypt afghanistan syria pakistan turkey and iran so in these countries 90% of the people are islam okay good so here any doubt yes any doubt here no sir no doubts okay good so remember yes sir yes sir in that mecca what is it the picture of of the box uh, that sir, i clearly don't know beta but and madina sir ha huh? yes sir okay sir why do muslims sir while talking they are talking sir are everyone one by one you should ask the doubt okay so here we studied about islam so let's go to the next that is christianity so christianity symbol this is we said as cross so we'll study christianity is the third most followed religion in india in india in the world it is first okay so and islam with 2.3% of the total population of india it is world's biggest religion with 2.2 billion followers worldwide okay good so this is the largest in the world and in the india it is third first is hindu next is islam then third is christianity in india jesus this is Jesus okay the god Jesus is referred to as what founder of christianity founder of christianity is considered as 
God Jesus. Okay. So he was born to Joseph and Mary. The parents' name, Joseph and Mary. Jesus is believed to be an incarnation of God in Christianity. Means he is the God, right? So incarnation means he was born as the person as Jesus. Okay. God has born as person as Jesus to Joseph and Mary. Every year, twenty fifth December, Christ, uh, that is Christmas, is celebrated to commemorate the birth of Jesus Christ. So, Jesus Christ was born on twenty fifth December. That is Christmas. Christmas is the born day. That is birthday of Jesus. Okay, where did he born? Jesus was born at Bethlehem, where Bethlehem, which lies near the city Jerusalem. Presently, it is in Palestine, right? That is Israel and Palestine, right? You may have heard that is in Palestine, Bethlehem. Okay. Jesus Christ was crucified. Means he was given a death sentence. That is the king. that is roman empire the king of roman empire in jerusalem he was given the death sentence okay crucified means death sentence so good friday is a christian holiday observed annually to commemorate the crucifixion of jesus christ means on that day jesus had died good friday you may have heard good friday is what the day of crucifixion means on that day he died so the book that is the holy book of christianity is bible holy bible okay and you may have seen this cross so cross is the considered as what the holy symbol that is the main symbol of christianity you may see here the god jesus was what crucified on the cross right that is why the cross is considered as the what the symbol of christianity so it reminds the christian that jesus died on the cross to save them so you can see here the god was crucified on the cross so this is about christianity okay so any doubt for anyone yes no sir no sir so the next major religion which is followed in india is sikhism this is the symbol of sikh you may have heard of gurudwara gurudwara that is the temple of sikh okay so minority religion in india six make up 1.7% of india's total population so sikh is the fifth most popular religion in the world with approximate 25 million followers so important sikh gurus the gurus of sikhs are guru nanak guru nanak is considered as the founder of the sikh okay so guru nanak the founder of sikh faith was born in talwandi near lahore in pakistan now known as nankana sahib in pakistan so guru nanak is the founder of sikh he was the first sikh guru he traveled for years before he found the dera baba nanak in kartarpur so he went from places to places to spread the sikh okay that is his teaching the sacred places he created for worship was called dharmsala now known as gurudwara the temple he built the temples and all right so those are said as dharmsala or gurudwara okay this is guru nanak he lived from 1469 to 1539 okay so just remember main main points that is guru nanak is the founder of sikh faith okay he was the first guru next is guru angad dev 
before the death of guru nanak he appointed one of his follower as the successor the successor after guru nanak guru angad dev the second guru okay his name was lehna after and his name changed to guru angad dev but came to be known as guru angad guru angad complied the composition of guru nanak whatever the teaching that is what guru nanak told he complied means he composed it to which he added his own new script known as guru mukhi okay that is the written script guru granth sahib the book name guru granth sahib the holy book of six is written in guru mukhi script this is guru angad dev okay that is the book is written in guru mukhi means that is we say marathi sanskrit different different languages right like that the script guru mukhi the language guru granth sahib is written in that language only this is the holy book of sikh guru granth sahib okay next guru is guru ram das he was the fourth sikh guru he was the founder of the holy city amritsar he founded the city amritsar which later developed as the spiritual capital of sikh faith because amritsar is in punjab and it is has one of the main important gurudwara and this is founded by guru ram das so this is guru ram das next is guru arjun dev he was the fifth sikh guru he was the son and successor of guru ram das so you, can you see here guru ram das was the fourth his son what guru arjun dev is the fifth he completed the construction of harmindar sahib harmindar sahib is the gurudwara name that is the temple name now known as golden temple that is known as golden temple that is in amritsar okay it is built in 1588 adi granth means the first book the first book was compiled by guru arjan dev it is a collection of nearly 16 that is 6000 hymns of sikh gurus this holy book is known as sri guru granth sahib ji sri guru granth sahib ji hymns means that is like poems and rig so he was tortured and executed on 30 may 1606 on order of mughal emperor jahangir for refusing to convert to islam so guru arjan dev this is guru arjan dev he was what tortured and executed means killed by mughal emperor jahangir why because he refused to convert to islam okay so that is guru about guru arjan dev next is guru tej bahadur guru tej bahadur he was ninth sikh guru he contributed many hymns to guru granth sahib in the year 1675 guru tej bahadur was executed in delhi under the order of mughal uh, that is mughal emperor aurangzeb so aurangzeb gave the order to kill guru tej bahadur okay next is guru gobind singh guru gobind singh guru gobind singh was the 10th and the last guru of the sikh community after that no guru was given the title okay so the, he was the last that is the 10th guru at the age of 9 he was made the 10th guru of sikh people when his father guru tej bahadur was killed on the order of aurangzeb so guru gobind singh was the son of guru tej bahadur okay so pawanta sahib a gurudwara in pawanta which is small town in the state of pradesh was found by him that is uttar pradesh okay in the year 16 
1999 he founded the khalsa community and the famous five k's or the principle of six was found on the same day so the k's five k's are kesh here you may have seen the sick people never cut the hairs right so they maintain the long hairs that is five k's are so kanga wooden comb they keep wooden comb with them they don't use any other comb okay kara that is iron bracelet kacha soldiers short and kirpan sword you may have seen they wear a small sword that is called kirpan so these are five kesh that is kesh means here kanga that is wooden comb kara iron bracelet kacha that is soldier sword and kirpan that is sword okay guru granth sahib contains all the teachings of guru gobind singh and was made the next guru of the sikh community okay that is guru gobind singh it is about guru gobind singh these are the main gurus of the sikh community there are that is guru amar das was the third guru and guru harbin uh, har that is sorry guru har gobind was the sixth guru guru har rai was the seventh sikh guru and guru har krishan was the eighth guru okay so the important six festival are hola mohalla and vaisakhi and guru purab and etc this is about sikhism okay so main remember about the guru na nanak sahib okay guru nanak that is the founder of the sikhism and the book the holy book is guru granth sahib yes so this is main important you should remember okay okay so if you see next uh, that is the buddhism you may have heard lord buddha right so at present buddhism is one of the world's major religion okay one of the major religion because china china follows buddhism so this is the symbol of buddhism okay this is said as dharma chakra what dharma chakra okay understand good so here okay good so this is the buddhism that is dharma chakra is the symbol so you may be knowing prince siddhartha that is gautama buddha later he became gautama buddha prince siddhartha gautama the name of the person gautam buddha is siddhartha later known as gautam buddha was the founder of the buddhism he started the buddhism okay here gautam buddha where he was born he was born in lumbini that is in nepal now so if you see here this is the place lumbini okay and raised in kapila vastu so he was born in lumbini and he grown up he became young in lumbini okay the father was that is king siddhartha's father was the king that is the father of gautama buddha was sudodana that is sudodana who was the ruler that is the king of the sakya kingdom of kapilavastu he was the king okay his mother's name was mahamaya mahamaya she belonged to the kalyan clan kalyan clan okay at the age of 29 gautam buddha left home and rejected all the worldly pleasures means he left the home he was married he was married okay he left all the children and his wife and went on the path of meditation to search the meaning of life right so he left all the worldly pleasures means his kingdom everyone he left and he went alone in the search of his own enlightenment okay at the age of 35 he left at age 29 and after searching for 6 years 
meditating under the Bodhi tree in Bodh Gaya, present day Bihar. Bodh Gaya is in Bihar. So if you see here, this is the place Bodh Gaya that is in Bihar. So he was meditating under a tree. The name of the tree is given as Bodhi tree that is in Bodh Gaya. So Siddhartha attained enlightenment and became Buddha. That is, he got what he was searching for, the meaning of life and everything, all the knowledge. So, he, that is the enlightenment. Okay. So, Buddha got enlightenment under the Bodhi tree uh, at the age of 35 years. That is in Bodh Gaya, Bihar. Okay. So, Buddha gave his first sermon, means the teaching, what he understood, his teaching, he gave the first sermon, we see it as sermon, in Sarnath near Varanasi, that is in Uttar Pradesh. This event is known as Dharma Chakra Pravartana, that is Dharma Chakra Pravartana, that is the sermon. It, uh, he first gave sermon in Sarnath near Varanasi, that is in Uttar Pradesh. This is known as Dharma Chakra Pravartana. The disciples who followed the Gautam Buddha, that is the disciples of Gautam Buddha compiled his teaching, means they wrote his teaching in the sacred books called Tripitika. The name of the books is Tripitika. It is written in the ancient Indian language Pali. The language in which it is written is Pali. The name book name is Tripitika. The holy book of Buddhism is Tripitika. Okay. Remember this. Tripitika. Okay. This is about all the teachings of Buddha. Buddha died at the age of 80 years at place called Kushinagar, a town in Uttar Pradesh. So, if you see here this black dot, this is the Kushinagar, place Kushinagar, that is in Uttar Pradesh. The preaching of Lord Buddha was most widely spread by Emperor Ashoka. Emperor Ashoka you may have seen that is Sarnath. It has stupas and all. That is Ashoka follows what? Buddhism. Buddha believed in the philosophy of Nirvana. A Buddhist temple or Buddhist monastery is the place of worship for Buddhist. Okay. So this is about the Buddhism and stupas are one of the most recognizable forms of Buddhist architecture where the remains of Buddha were buried. So that is the temple. Stupas are the temple like that. The great stupas at Sanchi was built by the Mauryan Emperor Ashoka the great in the 3rd century BC that is Ashoka the great. The king we see it as Ashoka the great because he was ruling whole of India, right? It was built in 3rd century. Before BC means before Christ, okay? The main Buddhist festival in Buddha is Buddha Purnima. That is, Buddhism is Buddha Purnima. It is known as Vesak, okay? China is the country with the largest Buddhist population. So, China people follow the Buddhism. This is about Buddhism. So, main things to remember is that is Siddhartha, Gautama Buddha or Siddhartha was the founder of the Buddhism and he was born in Lumbini that is in where? Nepal and here at the 29 age he left his home and at the 35 age he attained the enlightenment under the Bodhi tree that is in Bodh Gaya. Okay, the first sermon, that is the teaching, he gave at Varanasi, that is near Varanasi in Sarnath. Okay, so the book name, that is the holy book of Buddhism is Tripitika and he died at the age of 80 years. Okay, these are the things you have to remember mainly. Understood? So here, let's go to the next. Okay, so that is Jainism. So, Jainism is considered as founded by the, so Jains 
फ्रॉम द लेस दैन वन परसेंट ऑफ इंडियन पॉपुलेशन दैट इज इन महाराष्ट्र राजस्थान गुजरात एंड मध्य प्रदेश आर द स्टेट्स विथ मैक्सिम जैन पॉपुलेशन ओके सो द टीचिंग गॉड ऑफ इन जैनिज्म आर नोन एज तीर्थन का राज द गॉड्स और द गुरुज द गॉड्स और द गुरुज आर वॉट तीर्थन का राज दे आर कॉल्ड तीर्थन का राज इन जैनिज्म जैनिज्म हैज ट्वेंटी फोर तीर्थन का राज आउट ऑफ विच ऋषभ नाथा वॉज द फर्स्ट वन सो द फर्स्ट गुरु दैट इज द फर्स्ट हू स्टार्टेड जैनिज्म टीचिंग इज ऋषभ नाथा ऋषभ नाथा दैट इज द दे हैव ट्वेंटी फोर टोटल ट्वेंटी फोर गुरुज दैट इज तीर्थन काराज ओके सो द ग्रेटेस्ट जैन तीर्थन कारा द फेमस द ग्रेटेस्ट इज महावीरा यू मे हैव हर्ड लॉर्ड महावीरा लॉर्ड महावीरा वॉज द फॉलोअर ऑफ बुद्धिजम ही वॉज द फॉलोअर ऑफ बुद्धा एंड देन आफ्टर दैट ही स्टार्टेड हिज ओन टीचिंग दैट इज जैन ओके जैन so he was the 24th and the last tirthankara mahavira was the last tirthankara that is 24th tirthankara the greatest means he gave so many teachings he spread jain throughout the india okay so here prashavanath prashavanath was the 23rd tirthankara so this is prashavanath okay so he was the before महावीरा दैट इज ट्वेंटी थर्ड तीर्थंकारा वर्धमान महावीरा दैट इज महावीरा और वर्धमान महावीरा बोथ आर सेम हु वॉज द कंटेम्पररी ऑफ गौतम बुद्धा कंटेम्पररी ऑफ मीन्स फॉलोअर ऑफ गौतम बुद्धा वॉज बॉर्न नियर वैशाली अ सिटी प्रेजेंट डे इन बिहार ओके लॉर्ड महावीरा अटेंड एनलाइटनमेंट एट द एज ऑफ फोर्टी टू एट जृम्भिम का ग्राम ओके वेर jrimbhi ka gram he brought, uh, got the enlightenment in jrimbhi ka gram so mahavira's nirvana that is death occurred in the town of pavapuri in present day bihar at the age of 72 the first compilation of jain religion text took place at the second jain council at vallabhi in the 5th century ad jainism is divided into two sects that is digambara sky clad and shvetambara white clad okay so there are two sects in that one is digambara and the second is shvetambara okay so the tirthankara three gems of the jain doctrine are right faith right knowledge and right conduct okay the tirth that is three tan uh, three ratna sorry that is three ratna three gems three ratna three gems of the jain doctrine means the jain followers are right path right knowledge and right conduct there is one saying in jain they don't kill any animal right they never kill any animal so like that the right faith right knowledge and right conduct these are the three gems three ratna okay in india jainism spread during the reign of chandragupta maurya okay chandragupta maurya what uh, during his rule jainism spread in india ranakpur jain temple and Dilwara Jain Temple, located in the state of Rajasthan, are the most famous Jain temples in India. Okay, so Ranakpur and Dilwara, they are located in Rajasthan. Okay, so Gomateshwara Jain Temple, situated in Kam Karnataka, you may have seen Gomateshwar Murti, right? So that is 58 feet tall monolith statue. Monolith means used uh, that is made using single mono means one single rock so monolith statue of gomateshwara and is considered to be the world's tallest monolith statue dedicated to the jain god bahubali 
the god is bahubali that is the jain god okay so gomateshwara is dedicated to the god bahubali okay so this is about jainism so what are the main important things you have to remember that is it was found by what rishabhanatha and the main that is the greatest tirthankara that is the guru like god is mahavira he was the 24th or the last there are 24 tirthankaras okay so this is most important you have to remember this much okay any doubt for anyone let me know now now we'll study about the zoroastrianism that is this so this is the symbol of zoroastrianism a small religion community which exists mostly in mumbai so it is mainly in mumbai is called zoroastrianism their followers is parsi because the religion arrived in india from persia you may be knowing right parsi people so that is in uh, they came from persia now that is iran the country is iran the founder of zoroastrianism is prophet zoroaster prophet zoroaster the guru right the doctrine preach by zoroaster are preserved in the sacred scripture known as avesta also called zain avesta this is the holy book holy book of zoroastrianism okay that is zain avesta or avesta zain avesta or avesta fire temples are the places of worship of zoroastrianism religion the temples of worship that is temples are uh, worship are fire temples so these are the worship temples of the zoroastrianism so remember what they are called parsi and they came from persia that is iran and the founder is prophet zoroaster okay the holy book is zain avesta their temple is fire temple okay this is what you have to remember so this is about all the religions in india and your homework will be you have to solve all the exercise question questions okay? you have to solve this exercise question and if you have doubts you should ask me tomorrow okay fine yes so this is about all the religions in india okay so you have to do that is solve this exercise questions all the exercise question and if any doubt ask me tomorrow so everyone thank you for watching and subscribe to azure right classes